what is crime analysis? In its simplest form, crime analysis is making sense of information about crime. There can be information on a single offence, an offence series or data that contains thousands of individuals over a number of years. It's only through crime analysis that we can see the big picture and, crucially, an objective picture of what's going on. A crime analyst, now a highly regarded and certified profession, is the brains or the navigation center of a police agency. They provide the objective information that decision makers use to determine what to do, where to do it and which resources to allocate to it. Why do we need crime analysis? A new police officer might be going through her first year on the beat and notice that during the summer months, most forms of outdoor crime have gone up in number. She might erroneously conclude that crime figures are getting worse and worse overall, that the area is becoming a more dangerous place, when in fact we know by looking at the big picture and comparing crime statistics over the years, that outdoor crimes tend to rise during the summer every year. It's not alarming in itself, it's a pattern that repeats itself due to the fact that more people go outside, they go outside for longer, and that simply creates many more opportunities for certain kinds of offences. So one of the reasons we need crime analysis is that so we can see whether a fluctuation such as a change in crime numbers is normal, as in in line with the usual pattern, or if there is something different going on. A rise in a specific crime type that has not been seen before and is therefore not part of a larger pattern is something that warrants attention and needs to be analysed in more detail. An analyst would look at what is happening, where it is happening, when it is happening and who is causing it to happen and how. That can then help them infer the why, why it is happening. Again, looking at crimes or calls that come into the police over time, we have noticed that domestic violence spikes on nights when large spectator sports are happening and broadcast into people's homes. The fact that we know this means we can anticipate a greater demand on policing and perhaps have more officers ready, organize campaigns for domestic abuse support in the run-up to those events, or perhaps encourage potential victims to spend the evening and night with family rather than the partner. Regression to the mean. Now, here's a scary term, but it makes total sense, you'll see. Analysts provide the rational, objective voice based on the data available, and they may well have to temper any knee-jerk reactions that decision-makers might be tempted into. For example, a sharp rise in a certain crime type does not necessarily indicate that we will be faced with a linear or even exponential and permanent such rise. It may simply be a spike that is part of a natural fluctuation and over time data will show that crime may drop again to previous levels without any intervention. Likewise, some police decision makers may be tempted to take credit for a fall in crime when in actual fact that fall was again just a natural fluctuation around the mean value, the average. This is called regression to the mean. Crimes may never actually be at the exact mean value, but they will flitter from somewhat above to somewhat below and everything within a certain range can be considered normal. Sometimes it is the analyst's duty to point out when a change in numbers does not actually indicate a change overall, as the values will most likely just keep moving around the mean. But when they don't, and they really do venture outside the standard range, analysts will raise an alarm and look into it further. So for example, let's say a mid-sized town experienced an average of 150 burglaries a month. Perhaps that average burglary figure is made up of the fact that the actual figures fluctuate between 120 and 180 burglaries. So as long as the number of such incidents remains within that range, that is considered normal for that town in that time span. This means that it would be wrong to say that because in April there were 121 burglaries and in May there were 175, that there is a sharp rise in crime. For this particular span of four weeks, that is the case. However, this is still within the normal pattern. Likewise, the numbers may well drop from, say, 178 to 130 at a different time. And that does not mean that anyone can take credit for a fall in crime. You have to look at the bigger picture over time and you have to understand what the normal range is. So when the count of crime is further away from the mean in one instance, but then comes back to being closer to the mean, that is regression to the mean. As long as we're in that range and going up and down, there is no meaningful difference going on. However, if an analyst found that numbers consistently remain within the higher or lower part of that range, that may indicate a more permanent change in what the mean score is, and therefore in what the normal range is. 
But again, you need to observe that for longer than just a few months, as crime figures also fluctuate in line with the time of year. What do crime analysts do? Firstly, there are a number of job titles for the individuals who look at information and data to extract what it means. They might be crime analysts, intelligence analysts, performance analysts, tactical analysts and strategic analysts, for example. Some of their tasks are very routine. They produce certain reports on a weekly or monthly basis to let decision makers know what's been going on in their area, if there's anything of note, anything that requires their attention, or if things have remained the same. Often, police officers are only aware of what is going on in an area that is relevant to them. So how would a police agency then notice that there is a series of a certain kind of crime going on that spans a number of beats? The officers in charge of those individual beats might not realize that what is going on on their turf is not limited to just their backyard. It's happening across a wider range of geographical area. They can't rely on these leaders to perhaps bring it up over coffee and thereby notice they've both been experiencing similar trends. It's the analysts that will notice these links and connections and thus see the bigger picture of what is happening. How can crime analysis help in investigations? Analysts may also be assigned to work on single investigations or series of burglaries, thefts, assaults and so on. It might well be the analyst who figures out which of the offences reported to the police have been perpetrated by the same offender. They can then link a number of offences together to find out which ones are part of a series. The advantage to correctly linking the right crimes in a series is that it gives you more pieces in a puzzle. If you have good reasons to believe that a certain number of crimes were committed by the same offender, you have more data points and more information to work with. You know where the offender was at which time, so you can put more pins on a map to determine the area she or he chooses to offend in. Some geographic profiling principles could work wonders here. And perhaps in one offense, a witness was able to give a description of the perpetrator, and in another offense, someone saw the make of the car he or she was using. Looking at each case in isolation, you have far less information to go on, but if you can combine them, you already have an idea of what the offender looks like and what they drive. Crime analysts can perform their tasks as required, but the more clued up ones, who are more open to learning and professional self-development, might educate themselves more on, for example, geographic profiling, which uses the decisions an offender made on where and when to offend to help identify the perpetrator. Or they could learn about offender or behavioral profiling using the information they have from the crime or crimes in question to identify the attributes the unknown offender is most likely to have. Both profiling and geographic profiling serve one purpose, to prioritize lines of inquiry and suspects, to allow decision makers to allocate resources where they are most likely to be effective. An analyst able to use such psychological principles could be of great value to an investigation. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this content useful. You can get access to each episode's transcript with key learning points, timestamps and references if you get yourself onto my mailing list. Just go to the main website on policesciencedoctor.com and on the bottom of each page you will find a sign-up form for notifications of new content. Just enter your first name, your preferred email address and the type of organization you work for. You will not get any spam. This is just for me to let you know about new content and for you to get access to all the transcripts.